I was going to make a joke about that. Oh. <laughs> Are you going to teach us about hotels? Oh, yes. All about the math. math. No, maybe. Maybe next semester. Just teasing, of course. Oh, oh yeah. I'm with that. Uh, oh, good. I got a whole bunch of scrap paper. All right, guys. I want to show you one nifty thing that's easy to kind of pass by if I'm not careful. This is nothing you necessarily have to be able to do immediately. But I just want to point this out. Remind me, how do you factor x squared minus 4? Yeah, x plus 2. Where did, where did 2 come from? Yeah, square root of 4. I love it. So how do I factor x squared plus 4? <laughs> I don't know, some of you guys are going to say, well, you said we couldn't do it before, and that's because we didn't know complex numbers before. Square root of 4 is 2 and negative 2. Square root of negative 4, 2i, negative 2i. Let's try it. Let's foil it out, see if it, get, if it works. x times x <coughs> is x squared plus 2ix minus 2ix. The middle terms cancel. And then I get minus 4i squared. What's i squared? Uh, negative, one. negative 1. So I get x squared plus 4. That also makes sense because what do you get when you solve this? How do you solve this with how we did it? How do you solve this? You subtract 4. And then you do what? Uh, Take a square root. Immediately put plus or minus. x equals plus or minus 2i matches with that. Do you guys see that? So I could do weird shit too, like um, x squared minus 11. How do I factor x squared minus 11? x minus squared 11, x plus squared 11. Woohoo! Right. We normally just restrict it to nice <coughs> integers, but now we can open it up to complex numbers, so we can open it up to Gross radicals. Hell, I could factor A minus B. You ready? Square root of A, square root of A, square root of B, square root of B, plus minus. Now, yeah, on one level, this is just playing around with shit. But on another level, this is actually useful in a few places in that way. Everybody kind of get the idea of this? I mean, a lot of what we learned early is just looking at the simple possibilities. And when we learn more and more things, we start to go back. I can go back and say, well, now we have we can do more. We can actually do that idea with more. Okay, that's enough of that. I want to say that before we got too far into today. Last time we <laughs> last time we got into quadratic formula, we actually proved it. Or we derived it, to be honest. How's quadratic formula going in? Hello. Sure. Alright, now this is not like... Sometimes this is like exalted to make songs about this stupid thing, but... This is a little shortcut is all it is. It is just a shortcut. That's all it is. You don't normally hear a math teacher saying, but it's just a shortcut. It's a very useful shortcut, like most shortcuts are. What? But it's just a shortcut. I'm not going to make a song about it. Besides, no. So I think last time, I don't think we did any of these down here, right? Yeah. We did? No. No. No, you're saying yes, you're correct. Okay. Uh, just to get you guys started correctly here, can you identify A, B, and C the way this is? Not really. B is not 7 because it's not equal to... Is that B? No. You have to turn mine up to airplane mode. Let's see if anybody calls. You guys with me? This has got to be 
equal to zero in order for the quadratic to take effect. So, of course, here what do I have to do first? Subtract 7x. Add 2. Now what's a, b, and c? A is 3. B is negative 7. All right, you guys do the quadratic. You got to do it quadratic. <coughs> Jeff stayed at the window. <laughs> and the school paid for him. Is yeah. that you too bad replacement? No. I don't know. <laughs> I don't care. If they have a bed and working water, right, that's all I need. times A times C all over twice A. And then you just got to clean that up. And the cleanup part is the worst part about it. Take a 7, give or take. 49 minus 24. Yeah. All over 6. So you get 7 plus or minus 5 over 6. 7 plus 5 is 12 divided by 6 is 2. 7 minus 5 is 2 divided by 6 is 1 third. So I get 2 or 1 third. Is that what you guys got? Yes. So you guys are right here and you're like, that's what I'm going to get. Yes. Are you guys okay with that? Everybody see every step there? <coughs> All right here? This is 7 plus or minus 5. So what's 7 plus 5? Oh. I'm going to have a 6, 2. 7 minus 5. I'm going to have a 6, 1, 3. Is it a negative 7? Huh? Is it a negative 7? It is a negative 7, but what does the formula say you do? <coughs> negative B. Negative, negative 7 is 7. So right here it's negative, negative 7, which becomes 7. Or better yet, you just say, that says change the sign of B. Plus or minus. You guys, is that cool? You guys see that? Negative something means change the sign of that thing. It's another way to look at it. This came out nice. This came out, do you guys understand? You guys have got to be to the point where one third is nice. What's not nice? Square root of seven divided by cube root of five. I mean, that's gross. I mean, it's radical. So one third is nice. Two is definitely nice. What does that mean about the original problem? What could I have done? I could have factored it. I like it. Yep, no, no. Sometimes people that hate factoring, when they learn quadratic, they only do quadratic. It makes me cry a little bit. Some tears. But okay. All right, you guys try number two. Thank you. 
Say again? Yeah, the, the coefficient of p squared is negative 1. Now, if you wanted to, since it's, you know, it's an equation, you can divide both sides by negative 1. But the quadratic really doesn't give a shit if, if A, B, and C, if any of those are negative. Who cares? Just throw them in. Nice to have a machine that could help you get eight hours of sleep in one hour. In oh, eight days. hours of sleep in one hour? Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit, yeah. That's like a pill that has a whole day's worth of food or something. If you figure that out, Sean, you'll make a, a zillion dollars with that book. Probably get eight hours in one hour. Knowing me, I'd only be able to sleep 10 minutes then. That would be a big... Uh, All right, guys. So, somebody gave it away already that A is negative 1. What's B? 6. C? Negative 10. So and then you throw that stuff in. Negative B plus or minus B squared minus 4 times A times C divided by 2A. Negative 6, give or take. 36 minus, minus, minus is minus. Three negatives, right? So 36 minus 40 is... Oh, I said twice A, didn't I? What should be here? There you go, Jeff. Negative 2. What is squared in negative 4? 2i. Good. You can basically stop here. It's not the greatest thing to have a negative on the bottom. And let me show you something excessively weird. I could divide everything by negative 2. It's not too weird, I guess. Right? So negative 6 divided by negative 2 is 3. Plus or minus 2i divided by negative 2 is still plus or minus 5. Yes? How would I get the what now, sir? Square root of negative 4. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of negative 1 is i. And then, of course, here the 2's cancel. Yes? Well, here, technically, you couldn't really leave it because the 2 does go in evenly. So you do have to take that next step. If that was a negative 5 on the bottom, I'd be okay with you stopping there. And, and something actually a little more important is, what's the general form of a complex number? Oh, shit. What's the general form of a complex number? I like it. It's a number. A plus BI. Oh, man, we've all forgotten. A plus BI. Isn't that a complex number? A real part, imaginary part. Which one of these is in that format? Second one. Okay. That seems to be somehow important to someone somewhere. Real quick, before I do any more, uh, what part of this tells me there's going to be two answers? Yeah, I like it. So what's the only way that I would get one answer from this? Yeah, if the stuff inside here came out to be zero. Then I would get one answer. It's repeated. It would be a repeated answer. It'd show it twice. It's got to be two answers, but they just happen to be the same answer. So this uh, this b squared minus 4ac part, that part seems to be important. We talk about it for a minute. So if that part, stay with me now, this is called the discriminant. Discriminant. 
if it equals zero, I get one real answer. What if it's less than zero? Less than zero. How many? I'll get imaginary answers, right? If this is less than zero, that's the square root of a negative number. Are you guys with me? This is nothing magic. If that's negative, square root of a negative is a complex, is an imaginary number. And of course, I still will have two of them because the plus or minus will still be there. So that I'll get two complex or, yeah, complex answers. And of course, if that's positive, if that's greater than zero, I'll get two nice real answers. I don't know if you guys remember, we looked at this a while back. Uh, I can't remember where I put my notes. <coughs> On the very first page, we looked at, holy crap, we looked at these three situations. Two answers, one answer, no answers, right? So that totally relates to two real answers would be this graph. Two complex answers would be that graph. There's no real answers. And one real answer would be this one, the one that sits on the x-axis. It's got that one answer. It's beautiful. There's a, there's a totally algebraic way, and there's a totally graphical visual way, and they agree with each other. Oh. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Here, you guys try number three. Let me catch up to you guys. What goes right here? Negative 4. Give or take 4 squared minus 4 times A times C. 
all over twice a day. So just fill it in. Make a check. Notice here it's t equals because they're t's. Don't tell me x because there's nothing up here about x. So t equals negative 4. What do we, we get inside here? It's minus a negative, so it's plus. 16 plus 8. Sixteen plus eight, twenty-four. How do I do? Can I do anything with the square root of twenty-four? Can you do anything with the square root of twenty-four? Yeah, twenty-four is four times six. Square root of four is two. Square root of six, I don't know. Now what can I divide everything in here by? Two. two. So you get negative two plus or minus rad six all over two. You can stop there, that's fine. Or you can break it up like we did a minute ago. But here's fine. Is that all right? Oh, yeah. So let's do this. Let's look at this here. outcomes are. So without solving, no solve, to use English with no grammar. Tell me how many and what type. Solutions. So these. So let's see. Part A. Oh, let's see. What do you want to do there? Sure. Ooh, uh, stupid part. Let me do this one. I make one up for myself. Um, okay. So just evaluate the discriminant. Just that one piece. If the problem says how many and what type of answers? They're not asking you to find the answers. They're just asking you to tell them how many and what type. Which means you only have to do this part of it. Because that's the part that will tell you. If it's negative, it's not a radical, so it's complex. If it's positive, it's real. If it's zero, the plus or minus piece goes away. It's one freaking answer. So what's A, B, C here? What's A? B, B, C. So what's B squared minus 4 AC? It's going to be B squared. 4. 4 minus 4 times 3 times 5. 4 minus. So what kind of answers will this have and how many? It'll have imaginary answers. <clears throat> two. So two complex solutions or answers. Please, dear God, why does it make sense? Because where is this piece in the formula? It's inside a, a radical. So if the negative is inside a radical, you're going to end up with imaginary numbers. Why is there two of them? Because the plus or minus piece is still there. So here's a very, very important thing for later. Complex numbers always show up in complex conjugate pairs. Oh, shit. Just like we saw earlier, did we get that one answer, 3 plus or minus i? Isn't 3 plus i the conjugate of 3 minus i? So it's kind of nifty if you let it be. 
that complex answers always show up in complex conjugate pairs. That's an approximation of English. Okay. Complex. Okay. So here, what about this guy? What about this guy here? And then sixteen times forty nine. Seven eighty four. What does that mean? No. So again, look at the formula for that. If this is zero, this goes away. Your one answer is negative b over 2a. Why is there not two answers? Because the plus or minus piece, which gives you two answers, is gone. That's why if the discriminant is zero, you're going to get the one answer. That means the parabola sits on the x-axis, either like that or like that. Depending so no on if it's solution? Up, down. Later in this chapter, we're going to start looking at how do I know if it opens up, how do I know if it opens down, how do I move this thing around. So if it's zero over two, that means no solution. Say again? Zero over two means no solution? No. No. Uh, is that my bad? So, so this is zero, right? So therefore, this piece is zero. What is the answer then for this one? Got it. Thanks. Negative b. Over twice a, yeah, they're going to be over twice a, so 28 divided by 8. Yeah, okay, okay. so 7 halves, yeah, I got you. Max is like a dozen, 12, yeah. I know it just freaked some of you guys out. Uh, Alright, what's the quadratic formula? What does this thing do? What does this thing do? What does it do? It finds what? X's that do what? I can find X's. 7, I found an X. X equals 7. Is it X's that do what? I love you guys. You're all like, I don't know. Jeff, you learned this shit. We go back to the beginning. What did we start with? We started with this equation. What does a quadratic formula do? It solves this equation. Right? You guys with me? 
And if you think about it, if I have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and I make y zero, if I make y zero, what am I finding graphically? Flesh. What about it? If I make y zero and solve for x, yes, I'm, sol I'm getting x. But what, what, what is it? Why are they special? If I make y zero, where am I? Where am I if I make y zero? On the x-axis. So I'm finding x-intercepts. So there's two kind of answers, two ways to look at it. The quadratic formula solves this equation, which finds the x-intercepts of a parabola. So that's why there could be two of them, one of them, or none of them. If it doesn't hit the x-axis, there's not going to be any. Please, all this stuff kind of comes back on itself. All right, where are we going, Jeff? So if this piece is zero, no, no. What, pe what part of this tells me there's going to be two answers? Plus or, Plus or minus. And that's in front of this piece. So if this piece is zero, how many answers will there be? One. one. And I happen to know it's going to be this, but all that matters is there's just one answer. If it's negative, there'll be two and complex. If it's positive, there'll be two real. All right, so part of your brain goes, well, it's math. I'm never going to understand it, but you've got to go... And just look at it and see why, why does this make sense? Why would looking at this piece tell me anything? It's because of where it is. It's inside that radical with the plus or minus in front. It's going to tell me a lot. Shit. That's why we gave it a name. Math people don't like writing discriminant. If we do that, it must mean something important. So help me out. Look back at, uh, remember this problem we did? Remember the good old days? Wasn't that an easy problem? Right? And I said, I said, that means that it could have factored this, right? So let's take a look at this for a second. I want to build up to the next thing, and that'll be the last thing we do today. That'll be the last thing we do today. So if I look at 3x squared minus 7x plus 2, can somebody help me factor this thing? Yes, 3 times 2. Took me a second for my brain to figure out what you said. Factors of 6, that add to be? 6 times 1. Negative 7, so it'll be 6 and 1, they both have to be? Negative 6. Negative. through this real quick. <coughs> wow, well, you guys should all be able to do that. I did that very quickly and I don't give a shit because you all should be able to do this. What were the answers we got? <coughs> two and one third. So didn't two come from this? It wouldn't one third come from this. Add one divided by three. So, 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 if I knew the solutions to a quadratic were x equals 5 and x equals negative 1, could you build what the equation must have been in factored form? Where would x equals 5 come from? There must have been an x minus 5. Where would x equal negative 1 come from? There must have been an x plus 1. So what would it look like? fully out, it would look like that. So there are going to be problems that say, a quadratic has these solutions. What was the equation? And then you're like, uh, excuse me? But uh, this is all they mean. Can you just go backwards? What if I had uh, x equals, uh, uh, you can do it, Jeff. Negative 3 and x equals 5 fourths. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so this would come from x plus 3. That's easy. 4x, 4x <laughs> minus 5. 5 fourths. Add 5 divided by 4. And then you foil this out to make it like a, a, a polynomial equation. I like it. So there will be some problems to say, here are the answers. What was the, what was the equation? And you're not used to that kind of question. You're like, what? I have the answers? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs>
right? It's like 42. No, 42. You check it out. Okay, it's you guys there. What is six times nine? That's the end. that's the question. Look up Douglas out. All right. That's funny. If you're in the next lab, walk very slowly. <laughs> See you guys there.